So today I'm going to talk about a problem that a lot of you might be having or might have when dealing with aluminum on your engines. Um, as you can see I have the Edelbrock aluminum air gap intake on my uh, small block Ford here. And uh, when installing the carburetor I over tightened one of the nuts or one of the bolts I'm sorry and pulled the threads right out of the uh, aluminum right there. And so the first problem was probably because I was using too hard of a bolt. I had, um, as you can see here, grade 8 bolt, which is, is too hard for some applications, especially when you're torquing small amounts, which should only be 60 foot pounds or 60 inch pounds, which is 5 foot pounds. But since my torque wrench doesn't go down that low, you don't have an inch pound wrench, I was going for the hand type method and pulled the threads right out. As you can see, it just goes in and out of there. It catches eventually, but today we're gonna repair it. Went to O'Reilly's and picked up this Healy coil pack for 5 16 by 18, which is a proper thread size for these uh, manifolds, or basically any intake manifold. So how this works is we'll drill out the hole, then tap it with this tap and then with this tool here it has a little notch on the bottom hard to see in the package that will thread in one of these coils which on the inside is a proper thread size for our 5 16 by 18 bolt so let's get started on that punch here is going to be drilling out that bolt hole because we really want a perfectly straight 90 degree hole. And the problem is if we get a little off, we're going to have some issues with possibly vacuum leaks on our carburetor. A close look at the tap actually tells you what size drill bit to use. Okay, so I just went ahead and taped it off. I didn't want to risk getting any metal in there at all. There's still... Even under the tape, there's two towels in there just to make sure. Better safe than sorry. And then I got the correct drill bit. Let's see if we can focus on that. Nope, okay, well, it's 21 64ths drill bit. Which will go through there. So we can fit the tap through there. And then the heat coils and the bolt. Okay. So I got my drill hooked up here. I wish it was cordless, but it's not. So I'm going to try to get this camera propped up somewhere and get started. It's always good to get a little lubrication, especially when you work with aluminum. Because, as I've read, aluminum is a drier metal and can splinter and crack and seize up and do a lot of other things you don't want to happen. So I'm going to spray a little WD-40 down the drill bit. Alright, so here I have a, uh, it's actually meant for, this is actually from a tap and die set. It's a little holder for these things. If not, you can also use like a ratchet or something, whatever you can use just to pull on a little square there, diamond. Alright, so when we're tapping, we're going to want to go about a turn in and then a half turn back or even a full turn back, quarter turn in, or a, a one and a quarter turns. Just as long as you're going forward and back and forward and back to really cleaning out those threads. Now we really want to make sure I get a nice even feel to this. Yeah, it feels good. Right. You don't want to be wobbling around like I'm doing. Aluminum's really soft and brittle. You want to be careful when doing stuff like this.
You start feeling little snags like that, you know you kind of got a problem. And that's why it's good to make sure you're backing it out. Make sure you get a nice smooth. Tap here. Alright, that looks good. We'll run this down through one more time and back up just to make sure we're nice and clean. Okay, we're still getting little snags. So it's good to do this. There we go, all our stopping. Go. That's feeling good. I'm comfortable with that. Okay. Now I kind of want to clean all this out. Actually, I really want to clean all this out before we do the heli coil. I want to clean up all this shredded aluminum in, up in here. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but where is it? There's a little lip on here. You see how good the threads came out. There's aluminum down there. I need to get out some scraps. But there's a lip right here that can... Our gasket should take care of it, but better safe than sorry. I'm going to file it off. Okay, so first things first. You want to take the bolt you're going to be using, or the stud in this case, and run the uh, coil down it to make sure it's going to, it's going to be the right size. So we're good there. Okay, next we got this tool, which has a small little square head as well, and uh, also in the thread it kind of has a block right there, or a lip, and that goes down in the coil, and catches on that little uh, tab, and that's how you screw this down in. And then once you get enough tension on there, it'll snap that off, or cut through it. There's a small break in here. It's impossible to see. I can't focus. All right, yeah, there's a small break right there. That That's where it snaps off at. So I'm going to fish out the remaining aluminum in there. I don't know how else to get it out of there besides blowing it out with air, but I don't want it going everywhere right now. So I'm just going to use masking tape again and stick it down in there and pull out what I can. Alright, so I'm threading the coil onto the tool until it seats right there. I'm going to take this tool and I'm going to try to get it in with my just my fingers because it shouldn't be too tight. And it's not. There will be resistance because it's not a perfect fit. It's a little bit bigger than the tap because that's how it seats in there. So I'm going to use my T-bar tool and get a little bit more torque on here because it's getting too tight for my fingers. All right. So we're just going to gently get in there. And if you start feeling resistance, Stop because whenever you feel your resistance before it's all the way and stop because it'll break that tab off and you're kind of stuck at that point. All right, we did it. We made it all the way in. Okay, cool. And now just come on out. Just snapped off. Some of them you've got to give a little pop like that, just to break it off, because you don't want to over tighten it. Oh, would you look at that, perfect. Now these things have a little bit of a hex head on them, so you can get in there. And Perfect. 
I'll just start testing it. So there you have it. Don't over tighten your carburetor mount studs. Thank you.